What is happening, Blades? And welcome back to the Blades Ramble. I am, of course, Jimmy, and we are proudly sponsored by Action Coach Sheffield. If you are a growing business and want to continue that growth, they are the people to speak to. They actually have a seminar coming up on the 5th of April at Bramall Lane. Anybody with a growing business that wishes to attend, I'll try and remember to put the links in down below. We're also very proudly sponsored by Triple Point Brewery. Thank you so much for your support. It pays off going in for years and years and years. Brilliant brewery on Shoreham Street. We're there every pregame. They have their own cop lager. I think they've even got vegan beers online now from what I'm told. But thank you to them for supporting the Ramble. It's very much appreciated. Now, this was intended initially to be a snap ramble, which I've started doing, and it's basically one topic, bang, we're in, we'll talk about it, and it'll be a shorter video. I do intend on this being a shorter video. You'll be able to know whether you can laugh at me now when you you know how long it's run for. There's a few bits to talk about, Wilder, and it's too close to the Palace game for me to do a separate match preview. January transfer window has been absolute chaos. I've not been able to jump on and do a regular match preview for most games. I've been doing those as shorts where I can. We'll see whether that continues or whether there's a demand for more match previews going forward. We shall see, because I only want to produce things that people want to watch. So let me know in the comments whether it's it's your bag or not. If you'd rather I just did it as shorts content, let me know. So the main topic of this ramble, people questioning Chris Wilder. What? First thing to say is, you're absolutely right to be questioning Chris Wilder. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I think anybody that follows the ramble knows I'm a huge Chris Wilder fan, but I'm always a Sheffield United fan first, believe it or not. So if he makes a decision that I or anybody else isn't happy with or doesn't agree with, we're allowed to query it or question it. For example, I thought the cup game, it was half in, half out because Brighton made two changes to their lineup and kept a very strong team. We made five changes to our lineup after saying, after Wilder had said, we're going to go for it. We may have seen three of those for a Premier League game, but bringing in Norwood and Osborne, who were unable to reach the levels that we needed them to. And I don't mean to sort of just scapegoat two players here because nobody really performed great. It showed to me that it wasn't our priority. And I'm not saying it should have been. But I questioned that lineup. We got well beaten in the end. And that's okay. That's okay to question the lineup. The other thing that's come out that sort of split some people is Wilder's justified his selection of Gribich, Grubich. I, don't, I still don't know how to pronounce his name properly. Big Ivo. He's looking to back his new man, his new number one, essentially, even though he's got 13 on his back, his new main goalkeeper, by coming out quite strongly in the media, basically saying Ivo's number one. Ivo's going to be the main goalkeeper going forward. And when questioned about the other goalkeepers in the squad, he said, well, they're all out of contracts. Now that, to me, and this is purely my perception of it, is a nudge to say, you had your chance, boys, or you've still there's a contract there to be signed if you want to sign it. Some may have had that conversation, some may not have. People have then reacted to Wes Fodringham going on Instagram and posting a blank screen with lyrics and the song in the background, which I'd never heard this song before, but it's quite good. It's quite catchy. Snake, the rat, the cat, the dog, doodly, if you're living in the fog. I've never heard it before because I'm old, but I quite like it. So there's some that believe that is an underlying dig at Chris Wilder, the snake, the rat. What, even if it was, I'm not convinced it is, to be honest. It may well be. Are we bothered? Are we bothered? <laughs> because Wes has had his chance. Wes has not performed. He's had a contract on the table since the start of the season. Not just since Wilder came in. He's had a contract in front of him since Eki were here, and he's chosen not to sign it. That is Wes's choice. So if he's now throwing his teddies out at Pram because there's a new man that's come in and it's taken his place, that is football, unfortunately. So while I understand people questioning how Wilder handled that, I personally love it. I love the fact that he's no messing about. That sends a strong message to anybody else entering contract negotiations with the club. Look, we're not going to be messed about by anybody. Wes might have been our number one for the last two, two and a half years. But if he's going to mess us about, we'll bring somebody in to replace you and we'll do what we think is levelling up. I'm pleased with that. I genuinely think 
and believe that he does everything with the best interests of the club at heart, which they should do anyway, but sometimes there's people read a little bit further into it, don't they? Like a personal issue. I don't think that's, this is it. He mentioned today in his press, did Wilder, that Wes has asked him if he can go out on loan. And Wilder's basically said, look, we'll see what happens, but I don't want my second best goalkeeper now, essentially, going out of the club just in case Ivo gets injured or suspended. We need to prepare for what's best for Sheffield United. So I love that, to be fair. But I understand others sort of thinking, oh, it's a little bit, he's turning a little bit already in some of his presses. I don't think it's that. I think it's just a strong stance on player contracts. And the final thing that I've seen people questioning Wilder over is potential targets. And it started with Danny Ward, the Leicester goalkeeper. There was such panic within the fan base. And I don't know how widespread that was, but we've got almost 100 people in our Ramblers chat. And a lot of them were like, no, no, not Danny Ward. No way. No, we can't. Well, I did a ramble and I came on and I said, look, we haven't signed him yet. And from what I understand, we're not going to sign him. But I also have that feeling that if we did, do we not trust Chris Wilder? He's had some faux pas in the transfer market. There's no denying that. But usually it's when he's got big money to spend and he feels like he needs to justify spending that money. He will always defend what he spent on Ollie McBurney. He may even defend the Rian Brewster outlay. Sander Berger proved to be a good investment for us, even if it didn't work out the way we wanted it to. And even players like Luke Freeman, Callum Robinson, they did the job for us, didn't they, when we needed them to. We finished ninth the season that we, we bought those players. Ramsdale, look at Ramsdale. It never gets mentioned, but signed him for 18 million. Sold him for 30. I understand why people are able to question him, and you always will be. It's a matter of opinion, and that's what we're all about here, is letting people have their say. Nobody's opinion is right or wrong, because it's an opinion. If you were against Danny Ward, I understand it. But I like to put some trust in the manager, because he has got the best interests of the club at heart. We've been linked with Mason Holgate on several news sites. And before even knowing whether this is actually a thing, there's already people saying, he's not getting in at Southampton in championship. How can we sign him? Why are we signing him? Why would Everton be willing to give him up to a rival if he was any good? I understand all that. And again, this is not me criticising Wilder, but Mason Holgate would not be my first choice either. Um, I would much prefer us to go for a Joe Worrell or a Chris Mepham. But if Mason Holgate is the one that comes in on loan, I trust that it's the right thing to do for Wilder. You've got to think as well, just looking at Holgate as a player, he fills in that bash position, if you like. And I would say he's no worse than Basham at this level. And that's no offence to Basham. But Mason Holgate at one stage was a real player. He can also, a bit like Bash, fill in as a defensive midfielder. Nobody's really sort of mentioning that when, they, when they're talking about his name being thrown out there. But if we don't think Vinny Souza can last a full game, we haven't really got somebody else that can protect the defence. So maybe that's playing into Wilder's thinking, if Holgate is going to be coming in. The main message is, we might not agree or we might not make these decisions ourselves, but there's a reason he's a Premier League manager and we're not. As fans, we're all entitled to have our opinion and the more people that express those opinions in healthy and constructive ways, brilliant. That's what it's about. That's how why we debate. That's why we enjoy going back and forth about different opinions. But if he comes in, we'll, or anybody that comes in, we'll back him, won't we? Because we do. Because he'll be a blade, and we're all blades, aren't we? So let me know what you think about Chris Wilder. It wasn't a case of how dare you question Chris Wilder. The whole thing about Wilder is... I don't know anyone, if you have an honest conversation with them, that wouldn't put him in our top two, at least three of all time managers. So when you take that into consideration, you have to think the reason people grumble at him and aren't happy with him may well have something to do with a poor last six months in charge and probably moreover the way that he left the club. And again, I understand that and it hurts because he's one of our own. But he can't do anything more, to put it right, than he is doing already. He wants what's best for the club. We want what's best for the club. And if he signs players that we think might be past it or duds or whatever it might, they might turn out to be and he might be wrong. But we'll back him and we'll back the team because we're all blades. Now, on to tomorrow at Palace. 
Oh, my word. What a big game this is. Every time I'm down in dumps about United, I think, oh, well, that was last throw at dice. I thought West Ham, if we don't get a win against West Ham, that's it. It's over. But I tell you what, if we pick up three points at Pel- I'm back on it again. That deluded slash positivity train. And again, let me know in comments well, <laughs> which one it is. If we get three points at Palace and there's still that l- looming, lingering points deduction issue with Forrest and Everton, is there a chance? Is there a, a squeak of a chance? Oh, anyway. You know what I'm going to ask you, don't you? What's your team? So this is my team, and I'm sticking with it. Big Ivo in net, as we know, because Wilder's already confirmed that's happening. But again, this is my team, not the team I think Wilder's going to play. Although I think it'll probably be quite similar this time. Same back four, although I'm not as confident with them this time as I was going into the Brighton game. It wasn't, they didn't cover themselves in glory, but we're in Bogle, Anel, Trusty, and Reese Norrington Davis. I'm having Vinny as my holder just in front of the defence. And we're having Gus and Andrea Brooks returning to the lineup as well as our strongest first team midfield. I'm having Ben Brereton Diaz wide left, James McAtee wide right, and they're going to be behind my choice of striker, Cameron Archer. But I, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see Ollie McBurney return to the starting lineup, maybe even Willa Sula. We'll see what Wilder chooses to do come tomorrow night. So let me know what you think. Let me know your teams down below as well. What's your score prediction? I think we're going to nick a cheeky 1 0 because I'm deluded. Do I believe it? You'll never know. If you like what we do on the Ramble, please do like, comment, share, and subscribe. We've got loads coming up this week. Absolutely loads. It's a busy time for the club. And it's a busy time for the Ramble. We'll be doing a post-match after tomorrow's game. So join us for that. That'll be live. If you want to get your comments in, then we'll be doing transfer deadline special. So I'll be live as the clock ticks over the transfer deadline. So come and join me for that as well. We'll be live to see if Sheffield United make any last-minute deals. It'll be interesting. I'm not entirely sure that'll happen. I think the only chance that does happen is if we get a late bid for a nil which means we'll we'll have to be ready to go on a different signing, which I think we will be. So that's going to be interesting to see if what happens there. We'll also talk about all the other signings that are going on in the, in the Premier League and maybe even the Championship if we're keeping half an eye on that. Then on Friday, I'm recording something special with a friend of the channel to discuss all things January transfer window. Keep tuned for that. And then we'll be back with our post-game phone-in after Aston Villa. So... Very busy week. It's what we love in Tate. We love talking about our beloved blades. So for now, come on, you red and white wizards. Up the blade! Right up along.